Hello again. This tutorial is going to cover trees and the placement of those trees using particle systems in Blender. And the way this works is that, say, um, an individual tree object or group of objects um, is referenced or instanced many, many times to give you hundreds or even millions of trees which are scattered across the mesh in your scene. And using GIS data, we can create a very accurate placement map which will um, enable us to position those trees so that they only um, appear where they really are in the real world. I should say that if you're completely new to Blender, I'd recommend going and doing my first tutorial, which covers the displacement methods and uh, mesh creation, as well as, well as the basic shader setup. So as I've explained previously, getting GIS data accurately referenced into Blender um, can be done a number of ways, but the way that I prefer to do it is using um, textures. And as long as your textures are the same size and dimensions as your mesh or your DTM that you are um, rendering, they will always fit and map uh, perfectly, and which allows you to maintain the detail of geographic data, uh, but within Blender. So this image was made by um, layering up a series of um, different textures made from GIS data. So for example, all of these textures are the same dimensions and um, each one does a certain different thing to represent a different aspect of the topography. So we have a medium level vegetation cover from point cloud data, high level vegetation, which is essentially the tree cover and this is what we'll be using in, in our particle system. So where the areas are white, trees will be placed and uh, the black parts, you won't get any trees. Uh, so this is part of Richmond Park in, uh, in Southwest London. Next, we have uh, buildings, green space. And so effectively areas which indicate the, uh, the parks and green open areas. A height map, this is made from a grayscale image representing digital elevation model, roads, and finally, uh, water cover. And because the LiDAR data didn't quite cover the full extent of the park, what I've done is just overlaid some OS woodland features with that uh, LiDAR cover and that's essentially just extending that coverage to give me a bit more data to play with. In terms of making those textures, there are a number of different tools. I'm gonna to show you a workflow in ArcGIS Pro as well as FME, but no doubt this could be done in QGIS or uh, another package. So the actual vegetation or the tree cover is um, going to be derived from aerial LiDAR, but using the point cloud version of the data, which is in effect the raw uh, laser scan data. What's useful about aerial LiDAR is that the points are classified by their type of feature. So for example, we can filter our point cloud just to look at the um, high vegetation, in which this case is the, uh, the tree cover. So to create a texture of our tree cover in ArcGIS Pro, with the point cloud selected, you want to go to the data tab and then choose export raster. And what this is going to do is produce a grayscale image of the filtered point cloud, as you see it here. A Couple of things to check. We want the void fill method of none. So we don't want any data where there aren't any points. And probably to reduce the sampling value to say one, so we'll have a one meter resolution image at the end of it. Okay, so that's run. And if I turn off the point cloud, you can see we've got quite a nice accurate map of that tree cover. So in FME, I created a workspace which does the job of making all of the textures at once. 
So it reads in OS Open Data Features and creates separate images for the green space, roads, buildings, uh, water cover. It also creates a, um, a height map by um, reading in the DTM and converting that into a grayscale image. In terms of the point clouds, I'm reading in the LAS files and the point cloud splitter does the job of filtering that point cloud, just keeping classifications four and five, which are the medium and high vegetation. And then finally, rasterizing them and uh, writing out to an image. Okay, so in Blender, I have a scene already set up with uh, one of the textures added in as a plane and then manually subdivided as per the first tutorial. And then I've got a couple of things in here. So I've got a displace modifier, which is using the height map to displace that plane. And I also have a subdivision modifier to smooth it out. Now, the main reason for using the displace modifier is that the particle system doesn't work with the uh, adaptive subdivision method. So that's the other approach I showed previously where you would use a displacement node um, to displace the terrain. But it's still that is within the experimental feature set and it's not properly integrated into the rest of Blender. And it won't actually allow you to uh, use a particle system and to have those elements properly uh, sat on the displaced uh, mesh. So what I have in here is a pre set up shader, and this is a sort of a basic topographic shader that I've come up with, which layers up all of those textures that I showed you earlier. So for example, this 4.png is the uh, image created by classification four, which is the, the medium vegetation. So that's just mapped in here uh, as a color. So it's this sort of dark green, which gives us some detail for the medium level vegetation, i.e. everything that isn't quite a tree, but is still fairly tall. I have uh, the water image plugged in to the specular input on the principal shader. So that's giving us some reflectivity uh, on the, the ponds and the water. And I've got a couple of other things in here like um, buildings and the parks mapped out and also a bump map, which is using the DTM height map to give us some texture and a bit of a bump on there. Right, so now we can add some trees. So I will switch over to the uh, viewport shading solid view and provided with this tutorial is a file called tree.blend. And if you go and choose append and choose tree.blend, object and then tree one and append that into your scene you should have a tree uh, appear and it's quite big but don't worry about that what we need to do for now is select the move tool and then just move it out of our scene and this is so that we we want to render and instance this tree but the actual object that's being instanced in this case is far too big so we just move it away from the camera so to add a particle system you want to select your mesh and then down here in the particles tab hit the plus to add a new one and by default it will be showing as an emitter we want to choose hair and what this will do is add some hair and if you really wanted to get into it, you could um, use the actual hair strands themselves as vegetation. So adjust the length and the, um, the density and the clumping to produce different types of vegetation. But we're, instead of using the actual hair, we're going to go down in the render settings and choose render as an object. And then the instance object is the tree. So now you should see that we've scattered, in this case, 1,000 trees over our mesh. 
but they are lay laying on their side, which isn't right. So to adjust that, tick the advance button and tick rotation. And what we need to do is change the orientation axis to object Y. And this will make the trees stand up on the correct axis. So we now have a thousand trees randomly scattered across our scene. But in real life, trees aren't randomly scattered. They are in very specific places. So we can use a texture to control the placement of those objects. So back in your particle settings, scroll right down to the textures and hit new. And what this does is it produces a new texture in the textures tab. And you want to make sure that you choose the particle settings texture. Here, though, we want to open up number 5.png, which is the uh, LiDAR classification 5 for the high vegetation, which is our tree cover image. Now that what's important here is to set under the mapping uh, UV, so that image is correctly mapped onto our plane. And then under influence, untick time and tick density. So now those trees are only going to be mapped um, where the texture uh, is white. So back in the particle settings, if we up the number to say 100,000, you should see that that distribution uh, is a bit more accurate as to where those trees actually are, but they are far too big. So under the render settings, change the scale down to something like 0 0.02. You could, if you really wanted to be super accurate, you could hit N for the uh, properties. And you could see that the dimensions of your mesh are roughly uh, two by one. In this case, that's uh, two kilometers by a kilometer. And your tree is roughly um, 0 0.05 meters high. So you could scale and adjust your objects to be in real world units. And that way, when you used your particle settings, the scale you could set to one. So the tree would be at the same scale as your mesh. Okay, so I've just paused to increase the number of trees to, to 300,000 and switch to the rendered view. Um, so all of these trees are quite uniformly the same size and color. So we want to go and give it a bit more of a natural variation. So the first thing we can do is adjust the randomness of the scale to something like 0.4, which will make each instance a slightly different size, which makes it look a bit more natural. And then to affect the color, if you select the tree, we can go in and change the color input for the shader that controls the tree. Now this happens to have a nice image mapped for all of the leaves, but at this scale, there's not really any benefit in having that, that image mapped on there. So we can go ahead and delete it and add in the converters group, a color ramp node. So connect up the color to the color input and then change the type to be constant. And we can go in and add some different shades of green. So to affect the uh, randomness of the color, we also want to add an input object info node. 
and set the factor of your color ramp to be random. So this will assign from this group of constant colors, assign them randomly uh, across the, uh, the mesh. So if I go and change this white to something a bit more tree-like, can start to build up um, some subtle variation in color across our objects, which makes it look uh, a lot nicer and, uh, and a lot more realistic. So there we have a very basic particle system set up with a single tree object mapped across. You could improve this by, instead of using a single object, you could use a, uh, a collection of trees. So add in a new collection into your scene and pull together many different types of trees, which will make this a lot more realistic. And the more time and effort you put into the modeling of those trees and the detail of those objects, the more realistic it will be. It does depend on the sort of scale that you want to deal with at this sort of scale. A very basic tree model is fine. If you wanted something a bit more zoomed in, you might want to invest in some high poly tree models. So there we have it. That's um, about it for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks very much.